Framer Web versus UX Pin. How are they different? Which is the right tool for you? What's the difference? My name is Hiro. I'm a product designer in Los Angeles, building and maintaining a design systems for a SaaS company. My goal here is to help you save your time to study, to learn, to be more productive by providing you with concise and understandable information of what you may be looking for. Anyways, let's get back to the topic. Framer is a prototyping design tool that has the likelihood to become the next basis for the next gen prototype design tool. It's a design tool, but has its own JavaScript library that are optimized for prototyping purposes. Framer helps mitigate the gap between design and engineer by cultivating a shared middle ground for both sides. You can code to design and you can design with code components. If you are a designer that knows front-end coding, then this tool can totally become your next best friend. Now, what about UX Pen? UX Pen is also a prototyping design tool, but one that supports your design through the full life cycle of product design. For example, UX Pen has team and task oriented management features, and also an advanced asset management feature for a streamlined workflow. UX Pen is pretty good at providing digestible and friendly UI controls, even for technical commands. For example, you can embed logics into your UI components without knowing to code at all. But if you do learn even a little bit of CSS or JSX, you can easily triple your range of control in this design tool. Framer and UX Pin, they are both a prototyping tool that lets you configure advanced UI interactions and behaviors. They're both web app runs on a browser. They're both highly collaborative, easy to use in a team, and they're both capable of importing real code as a design component. Now first, I want to talk about three highlights of Framer. First, Framer can create advanced interactions easily. Second, Framer has limitless extension and design configurations. And three, Framer has a thing called Framer Library that helps bridge the gap between design and engineer. So let's talk about the first one. Framer can create advanced interactions easily. For example, unique native tools like scroll, pages, tabs, these tools allow you to make common interactions so much easier than what most design tools offer. In the description, I added a link to the Framer web example page. Here you see a list of effects we can commonly see today and how simply they're built inside Framer. The second thing is Framer can intake codes so it has limitless extensibility in design configurations. The most powerful differentiator of Framer is its ability to bring code into design. The Framer company originally built a Framer JavaScript library to help build design interactions easier before they got their hands into prototype design applications. So it's not a surprise Framer works with code. You can import React components component codes into your framer and use it as a design component to prototype with. The imported component will behave and interact the same way it does in the production environment. Framer also supports importing packages and API, meaning just like real code, you can install any frameworks or services that are publicly available to use within your design. From things like Google Map, Material Design UI libraries, and YouTube APIs, to simple things like Avatar Generator or Custom custom buttons, or you name it, you can install and use them inside your projects. You can also export and share packages in the store yourself. The third thing is Framer Library, which helps bridge the gap between design and engineer. While the UI engineers love using Framer's JavaScript library, perhaps not enough designers acknowledge the beauty of this. Framer has Framer API or Framer Library or Framer Motion, but all in all, it's all JavaScript library based on React Hook that helps you achieve interactions and animations easily and elegantly. So how does this matter to designers who won't be coding? It matters because this lets you speak design and code. Framer library is a language that's understood both inside the design tool and in the code editor. Imagine you're on your laptop and you just finalize your interactive prototype on your design tool. Framer from here can toggle to handoff mode to expose every details in a code format which can be taken and consumed inside Visual Studio to be used. Framer Library is one of the underlying magic that's enabling this. Now let's talk about UX Pin. UX Pin can do these three things. It manages your projects between teams and partners. It offers the most advanced designer interface and it has many built-in conveniences. It manages your projects between teams and partners. UX Pin is not just a prototype builder, but it's a solution for a scalable design team. As an example, I'm gonna list out some of the features they have. Slack Jira integration. This allows you to further integrate UX Pin into your team workflow. An approval request and task assignment feature, which allows easy 
team transactions, comments, and documentation feature. It allows you to collaborate and communicate smoothly all within the product. You share a link, you get a comment, you can respond back. Iteration. Iteration is a quick way to take snapshot of point in history to iterate with peace of mind. It's a type of version control. Design systems. This is an enterprise feature that helps team easily build and manage a comprehensive design systems, such as build documentations and update and manage your component libraries and share with your team. The second thing about UXPaint is that it offers the most advanced designer user interface. For non-coders, UXPIN probably has one of the best interface for building conditions and logics. Although some features are exclusive to paid plan, UXPIN supports creating conditions, logics, states, setting variables, and adding rich interactions all within the designer with a friendly interface. UXPIN can also replace Envision's prototype showcase because it has equivalent features baked into it, like build interactions, showcase it, get comments and collaborate, etc. Now UXPIN also facilitates design system management for enterprises. So if you have a business plan, you'll get access to a design systems documentation feature as well as the ability for the team to quickly use those components and update them. And finally, UXPIN has many built in conveniences. To list out some, merge technology. Now the merge technology allows UXPIN to import codes into components just like Framer. This brings UX pin on par with Framer in terms of its ability to work with the source of truth. Now, which code import feature is better, Framer or UX pin? Right now, all I can see is that UX pin's merge technology is younger than the Framer's technology. So, while there's a lot we can perhaps expect from UX pin, at the moment, Framer is perhaps a step ahead. But that said, in terms of the technology, they're both doing the same thing, allowing users to import the actual React component code. Other built-in features are such as accessibility checker tool. UXPIN has a quick accessibility checker tool, which is a nice convenience if you are designing to be compliant with certain accessibility standards. Fill data feature. This is basically a, another convenience tool that can quickly insert realistic looking data to create your composition. Library Manager, a structured organizer for every reusable assets, whether it's your reusable assets or a team scale, you can quickly create different libraries. So which tool is the right tool for you? If you are somebody who wants full ownership of the interactions and animation design, then Framer is the way to go. And the reason is because once you configure interactions and animations within Framer, you can output into a code snippet and engineers will take the snippets and use as is and that will help you achieve the exact same result. There's almost no discrepancy between design and development. Everything you design is going to be reflected as is in the actual production. So again, if you want a tool that gives you full ownership of the interactions and animation design, I'd say go with Framer. If you want a tool that can translate design into code better, this is also Framer for the same reason I just mentioned. Framer, when you create prototypes and add interactivities and animations, you can switch the handoff mode and you will be able to see all the actual codes that's being used, which you can hand it off to the engineers. Or you can also create your own code component or write your code to render into a component and you can hand those TypeScript code to the engineers as well. If you're somebody who already have designed systems but want to strengthen interaction design fidelity, Framer is a great tool. You can continue to use Sketch or Figma or any design tool you use today, but you can import those design and explore the interactivity as well as the animation within Framer. Then you can either test it, you can document them, or you can basically hand off and create almost one-to-one -one design in production. If you're somebody who wants a streamlined team platform that empowers collaboration, then UXPIN is the way to go. UXPIN, again, is much more than just a prototype design tool. It helps you collaborate within the team, manage assets. It helps you communicate and make decision and teamwork better with your external stakeholders. If you're somebody who wants to embed various logics into your prototypes, but rather do it without having have the code, then UX Pin will be a great tool. Framer does also provide you with many, many tools to help you easily design interactions and animations. But when it comes to adding advanced and complex logic, Framer is more dependent on you actually coding that out. 
But UX Pen, on the other hand, provides you with many native tools that help you create variables, help you create if-then conditions, states, and logics using a very simple user-friendly interface. They are, after all, simulations, so you cannot expect one-to-one -one results as a final output. However, you can have granular control over what you want to simulate. And you can do all this without really knowing how to code. If you're somebody who would rather do everything in a single platform, like you don't want to work on Sketch and Envision and Abstract and all these different third-party tools, then UX Pen might also be your choice as well. UX Pen lets you wireframe design, create design system, share it with your teams, manage your assets and project with your team, share it with external stakeholders, get comments. You can do so much things without having have to jump around different products because it's all within UX Pin. All right, hope that covered the questions you guys had before you watch this. I also have some other comparison videos that talk about many popular design tools. There's a lot of relevant topics in feature introduction, so they may help you make decisions on which to choose with your situation. As always, thanks for watching and please comment if you have any questions or feedback. Thank you.